Hey fella, I'm gonna level with you here. Take a look at this suit I made. And you didn't think tailoring was worth the effort. Look, tailoring is kind of underrated. If you don't mess with this skill, you're wrong. I'm not backing down from that, you're wrong. And I bet you're wearing ripped jeans in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Okay, holes in your pants don't make you look like an edgy skater boy with a dark past who likes to get absolutely wild to some crush 40. It makes you look like a zombie's meal prep. So unless you want to practice your any percent speed run, I suggest we get those holes covered up ASAP. A needle thread and scissors is everything we're gonna need. It's all basic stuff you probably left behind in your spawn house. Well, the joke's on you. Go back and get it. And while you're on your way back, I've got a quick side note. I want to give a big thank you to Good Old Games for teaming up with me and accepting me into their extended family. I'm kind of like the estranged uncle they only see at Thanksgiving, and despite the year-long absence, I don't really have much to say. If you're looking to grab a game and want to support the channel as well, then consider hopping over to their storefront with my affiliate link in the description below. Thank you again to Good Old Games, and now back to fixing your cl Oh. Oh no. Technically, all you need to get started is your god-given hands. Now, that's not gonna cut it for collecting better materials later on, but for those upgrades, we're gonna need a pair of scissors and a running license. Scissors can be found pretty commonly around the map, but if you're looking for a surefire way to find a pair, you're gonna wanna check out the nearby schools. Uh, be careful with this one, though. When I went to my nearby school, I wasn't the most well-liked guy at the parent-teacher conference. Probably because I don't have any kids. But once you get past the angry parents, you'll also find half-huffed Elmer's glue and some very cool friendship bracelets. It's the apocalypse, and the only bite I'm suffering is frostbite. A drip or drown, fella. Once you pick up some scissors, a couple new options open up to you. Such as leather, or... Well, okay, it's disturbing, and... I would not call it ethical, but you can now start ripping up the zombies' underwear and shoes. But that's not as weird as making it to second base with everyone. Sorry, I I'm joking. I just wanted to see the look on your face, and it was priceless, except for you, Dustin. Lighten up, man. That's actually part of a very cool mod called United Crafting, the tailoring module. Uh, the link for that will be in the description. Getting back on track, as far as a needle goes, you're gonna want to root around in your neighbor's medicine cabinets. If that doesn't work, Give up and torch the place. You're either gonna find the needle eventually, or you're gonna have enough space to build Eggman land, and I'd call that a win-win situation. Okay, you're lucky, man. I was ready. Some... some people, man. <sighs> All right, that's better. That's better. The final piece of tech you need to start tailoring is thread, which can be found in cabinets along with needles. Now, you're more likely to get it from ripping up every single piece of clothing you come across, and I mean every single piece of clothing you come across, you have no idea how much clothing you have to rip up. Look at all that. All that work for 11 thread. That is ridiculous. We're gonna get more into that in a second, but luckily the merciful devs at Indie Stone don't want you to suffer too much. Yes, I know what game I'm playing. Speaking of suffering, I spawned in an absolute mess of zombies and by the end of it, I had 447 ripped sheets, 57 denim strips, 38 leather strips, 30 thread. Tailoring level zero is rough. Now I picked up these coveralls and I'm not gonna rip these apart. I'm gonna show you why later in the video, but for now, to prevent myself from getting confused and harvesting this precious commodity for parts, I made sure to favorite the clothing item I did not want to rip apart in this case, the coveralls. As you level up, you're gonna get more thread from ripping up clothes. I'm not sure how the math goes specifically, and I can't read runic glyphs, so this this is the best graph I've got. Alrighty, what's next? Um, Oh, patch holes, remove patches, patch holes, remove patches, patch holes, remove patches. Yeah, a good way to get consistent XP is to sit in a corner and repeat these two actions over and over like you've gone crazy, preferably on a clothing item you don't need with tons of coverage, like the coveralls I picked up earlier. After I used up all 30 pieces of thread and 20 remaining brain cells, I was very close to tailoring level one. I only needed 12 experience to reach the next level. The good news is you don't always use thread when you're patching holes. The bad news is this is boring. I'd recommend you put on a podcast, audio drama, or maybe just some classic white noise while you waste away your days grinding out these meaningless levels. Unfortunately, that doesn't make leveling the skill any less of a gruesome cycle. A cycle rivaled only by classic World of Warcraft. Unlike classic, you can speed up this leveling process tremendously, and I don't mean by cancelling your subscription. Of course, like everybody, I'm telling you to track down the books and the VHS tapes. That's... no, no, that's not how... Uh, that's not how I would have done it, but... oh. There he goes again. No matter how you get these books, I think everyone could use a little light reading before their mandated bedtime. Assuming you reach level 8 in tailoring without doing a funny ollie out of this mortal coil... Easy. 
you can repair the condition of most clothes much more effectively. I think the percentage is like 8% before and 20% per patch after level eight. Now, not all clothes, the firefighter set, bulletproof vests, and all the shoes are still unrepairable. Meaning you'll still have to get new shoes every now and again to avoid gangrene, but for the most part, you'll never have to change again. It's kind of gross, but it's the apocalypse and sweat stains are the least of your concerns. Um, drip or drown, fella. Now, why should you level tailoring? I want you to take a look at this shirt. It does not provide a lick of protection. A zombie could push you and you'd probably sustain major damage. Well, if you take that shirt and you use ripped sheets to pad your clothes, let's pretend you're at max tailoring level, you're only getting a 5% increase to scratch defense. That is terrible. And that's probably why people don't like tailoring because that's as far as they go with it. Now, you've probably noticed this screen says bite, scratch, and bullet. That means with padded thread, nope, that means with ripped sheets, you are only getting a third of the necessary daily defense nutrients. If you go and do it the right way and use leather strips, you'll get a sick 10% increase to bite defense, 20% increase to scratch defense, and another 10% bump to bullet defense. Not as important in single player, yet. I know that sounds small, but that's only if your brain is smooth, check it. This bonus is applied to each piece of clothing you've padded. So that little piece of crap shirt that didn't give us any defense, you can make that now give you 10, 20, and 10 defense. Now, once you account for all the layers, you're looking at like so much defense. Okay, not with this set of clothes, but what's the best armor in the game? To find this armor, I'm gonna go to the mall and do a little bit of shopping and what? Dude, I have debug mode on. You could have just unlocked the door or phased through it. You, you didn't even have to fight the zombies. What are you doing? <sighs> That aside, I've compared and contrasted, I've turned on my night vision goggles, and I've put clothes under the microscope. These are the best items in the game for protection. Prove me wrong, you can't. A welder's mask or motorcycle helmet, just whichever one you find first. A white scarf, yes, it needs to be white. I don't know why, but the code is different. It gives better protection. A denim shirt. It is the only shirt in the game that offers zombie protection. I didn't know that until now. The police bulletproof vest. With mods, you can make that a really good place to stick your trowels. And a leather jacket is always in style. Now that's it for the upper half. Let's move on to the most important part of the body, the wrists. Any digital watch will do you. That's just for drip points. What you cannot miss out on is the fingerless gloves. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. Make sure you grab a pair of leather gloves for the safety of your fingies. And lastly, military desert camo pants and military boots will wrap us up. There actually is no discernible difference between speed modifiers. So yes, go for boots over sneakers every time. Until I'm proven wrong with an update, which may or may not have come already. I'm too old to keep up with this. Aw, look at my little man. It's ready for his first day of school. Now here's where I'm at protection wise with the best armor in the game while also being layered up with a shirt, tank top, long johns, and a hoodie. It's not fantastic. You are going to die if you slip up with these stats. What about when I apply padding to all eligible clothing? Well, at level 10 tailoring, we end up with some much better optics. I'd be surprised if a zombie bites you wearing all this. In fact, I ran some tests with this set of armor to see how long it would take a zombie to hurt me. It took eight tries to finally bite me. I counted on my fingers, it was very scientific. And you guys thought tailoring wasn't worth the effort. Now I got the chance to interview a buddy of ours who usually defaults to the team's tailor, and he had a few great suggestions. I, I didn't ask him to, to record this, so I'm, just, I'm gonna speak for him, but uh, quote, if I had my way, I'd add some features for it. Like makeshift body armor at like level four and six with like books and metal sheets, repairing more clothing, maybe the ability to make twine, things that help make the skill good, but not overpowered, end quote. Of course, I know there's mods for pretty much all that, but there's simply some things that should be in the base game. And until those are in the base game, all we've got is padding and patching. Let's talk about those. Well, I'm guessing Monster Musume is your favorite anime because you've done a lot of flirting with the undead. When you're done having a little powwow with Zombina and want to make yourself presentable again, just right click the clothing item that needs repaired, press inspect, and you'll be greeted with this. I am not being paid enough to deal with monster banging degenerates. Look, cover those holes up by right clicking and selecting patch holes. After that, you can pad your clothes. This is where those leather strips Alvor had you make are finally gonna come in handy. Just in time too, I've been hanging onto those since 2011. We already talked about the benefits to padding, but honestly, you're not gonna wanna keep all these layers on all the time. You're gonna sweat yourself into an eternal coma. Ideally, if you're at your base and you know you're safe, feel free to take a couple things off. But if you're out in the open on a loot run, make sure to keep plenty of water bottles on you to stay hydrated. 
This won't be a huge issue in the winter, but let's be honest, none of us survive that long. And armor is all well and good, it'll help you keep alive, but if you want to find out how to make your base as well protected as a temple that is your body, check out this video right here. And finally, I want to thank my patrons. I can't explain how much I appreciate your support, fellas. Thank you to Ariad, Enrico, Liam, and TC Chop. You guys are awesome. Thank you.